Check my GPS for directions. Freak! Network error! Now what shall we do? Hey! Welcome to our village. I am Balu. You seem to be lost, I suppose. Yeah. Could you help us with the way here? Come with me. I am going to Miss Dolly's house. You can rest there. And later, she will direct you wherever you want to go. Thanks a lot. Come on, sir. Hey, Miss Dolly, I'm here. Dolly, Dolly, Dolly. Naam se hi koi young celebrity lagti hai. Huh? Ye to granny hai. Hey. Who are you? I am Sid, and she is Sim. We are out for a long drive, but we are lost. Balu told us that you could help us out. Lost, huh? Surely I shall help you. <laughs> Good Lord, Balu, where were you? You know I need vegetables every week, and you just vanished into thin air. But Miss Dolly, now enough of your talking. Take this milk and give me my vegetables. Here you go. Huh? Okay, Grandma. I will have to leave. Please take care of our guest. <laughs> Don't worry. I will. Hey, Grandma. May I ask you something? Sure. Go ahead. That man did not pay any money to you for the milk. And you didn't pay him for vegetables either. Oh yes, even I saw that. What you saw is the barter trade. Barter? What's that? In barter trade, commodities were exchanged for commodities. As the concept of money did not exist in olden days, people exchanged grains, livestock, cattle, etc., with each other. Ah. That means when I complete Sid's college assignments in return of chocolates, that's barter, right? Yes, you are a smart girl. Hmm? Kya baat hai? The whole world without money, life would be so simple. Simple? No, dear. Life was more complicated. As for barter, one needed double coincidence of wants. What's, What's that? that? It means I want to sell rice and buy oranges in return, and someone wants to sell oranges and wants rice in return. Then this is double coincidence of wants, and then trade takes place. But Miss Dolly, what if I don't want oranges and want apples in return? Then, then you have to keep on searching for a person who's ready to sell apples in exchange of rice. And if I don't get one, then you have to eat rice or starve. <laughs> Iska to ho gaya FTDDP. FTDDP. Full to the nadam popat. Everyone faced the problem of double coincidence of wants in barter trade. Also, it was difficult to determine the exchange value of commodities, as in how many apples should be exchanged for a sack of rice. Hence, the need for a common medium of exchange was felt. Now, people started using commodities like rare seashells, rounded polished pebbles, salt, feathers of rare birds, etc., as money. 
That means commodity money, right? Right. In fact, animal and human teeth were used as money too. Ew! Teeth of animals and human? So I can cut the teeth of the head of the head. Yes, and I will eat the teeth of the head of the head. Oh, cut it off you both. Do you know that there were many civilizations who did not speak to each other but traded with each other? Huh? That's hardly possible, Grandma. Of course it was possible. These civilizations practice a form of trade called as silent trade. Traders carrying goods from far away exotic lands would come by sea and anchor their ships on the shore. Then the goods they wanted to trade in were arranged neatly on the shore. They would then signal the natives by lighting a fire, ringing gongs or beating drums etc. They then went back to their ships and waited. After some time, the natives would arrive at the spot, examine the goods left by the traders and keep a certain quantity of gold in exchange of the goods and go back. Traders would then return. If they found they had received proper quantity of gold for the goods they bought, they would pick up the gold and sail away. The natives would then come out of the forest and take away the goods left by the traders. But if the traders did not find proper quantity of gold in exchange for the goods they had laid out, they would neither touch the gold nor the goods but withdraw to their ships, leaving the natives to add more gold to create an equal value. The trade took place with complete honesty and ended when both parties accepted each other's offer. Wow! Silent trade! So, so cool. cool! That means, Miss Dolly, gold was also used as a medium of exchange? Yeah, but only in few areas. But then the use of so many materials as medium of exchange led to confusion among the people. So, a need for common medium of exchange was felt. Okay, that's when coins began to be used. Indeed. It is believed that the first metal currency coin appeared in 1000 BC in China. Later, it was used in different kingdoms of the world. Initially, Coins made of gold, silver were used with the inscription of the king or the royal deity engraved on it. Ha, huh, I know. The first historic character to have his impression made in a coin was Alexander the Great of Macedonia in 330 BC. I have seen such coins in the museum. Much later, coins were made from the cheaper metals like copper, brass, nickel, etc. But carrying the bulky coins must have been a problem. Yes, it was now time for the invention of paper money. The Tang dynasty in China was the first to introduce it in 1080. Paper currency is the latest currency. Oh, Miss Dolly, the latest is not paper money, but plastic money. Plastic money? Here it is, Grandma. Aajkal sirf paper money nahi, but people use debit cards, credit cards, etc. These are called plastic money. Rupees 500 spent karna ho, ya rupees 50,000. Ek hi card kafi hai. Aha, great. These cards then have really simplified the use of money for the people today, I suppose. Oh, yes. Grandma, I'm feeling very thirsty. Wait, I'll get you some water and something to eat. Come, by the time we GPS ka network check the GPS network. Miss Dolly, how much knowledge of money is about the history of money? Right? She thinks that she will be from that time. Huh? <laughs> Ruk, I'm going to tell her now. What happened? See, the house is gone. Huh? What is this? Huh? Please take care of our 
Yes. <laughs> Don't worry. I will. Welcome to our village.